Okay, so today what I'm going to show you is how to take your short-range Muir's radio and transmit around the world to anyone you want to talk to using the internet bridge Zello. So, using Zello, um, typically what you do is you use your cell phone um, or related device um, to talk directly walkie-talkie style to another cell phone on the cell phone network or over the internet through Wi-Fi or whatever. But, we can use our Muir's radios to do the same thing when we can't be near the cell phone. We can have the radio to connect to the cell phone and then we can use our Muir's radio frequencies to communicate through the internet using the, the bridge that we're going to set up right now. So to set up your Zello bridge, you're going to need a couple things. First thing you're going to need is a uh, cell phone to act as your internet bridge. So you can use any Android device, put uh, Zello on it, create your Zello account. Now the Zello channel that I'm on right now is the Muir's Radio Club MU1A1 Club and I do recommend go ahead and join that club and uh, you can go ahead and use that for um, your, your communications. You can also set up your own but you know say hi on the Muir's Radio Club that's what it's for. Now what you're going to need in addition to a cell phone is a radio for a bridge. Now none of these are dedicated Muir's radios. So what I have here in this case is a terribly overpowered Zastone ZT889G. Uh, on the other side what I have is a Baofeng uh, UV5R which is more um, reasonable for these purposes. Uh, the Zastone is a 10 watt radio, the Baofeng is a 5 watt radio, but they're both set to low power, which is in this case is 2 watts, which is um, the, the maximum legal limit for Muir's. So um, we're down to 2 watts, and that means we can communicate to this radio, for example. Um, what this radio receives, it will transfer over to the internet bridge, and that will go through the internet to the second internet bridge, and then come out the other radio, which is on a different frequency. So let me give you an example of how this works. I have my handheld radio that's going to talk into one of these two radios. It's going to bridge that over the internet and then come out on the other side. So here we go. So I key down and you can see that on this side I have the, um, uh, this is the receive, this is the transmit over here. When I let go, um, you're going to see that repeated through one of the radios. These radios are not talking to each other, they're talking to the bridges and the internet is connecting the two radios. Okay, so when I key down, I'm going, to, I'm going to see that these two internet bridges are receiving and transmitting. So with my little radio here, communicating, I believe, to this one. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. So what you see there is one of these goes into receive mode, one goes into transmit mode, and I'm receiving over here on a mobile uh, to hear how that comes across. Now, it's really scratchy and staticky because these radios are much too close together to do this. The sound quality will improve if these radios are not together, but they're right on top of each other, and that's creating a really noisy environment. Um, but it works. So what you need is, uh, on your end, you're going to need at least an um, Android device with a dedicated radio as your, as your bridge. The receiving party is going to need an Android device with a radio for their bridge. However, they don't need that. They can just use their device to receive your channel on Zello as well. That's fine too. Um, but if they want to be radio connected, for example, if you work at, um, say you have a, a company where there are two locations and you have people at one location that carry radios and frequently want to talk over to people at a different location, well that's when this comes in. So we'd have people using radios on one end, they all communicate to the internet bridge through that transmitter and receiver, and then at the other location they're going to communicate through their radios to this bridge out to the internet. Now there's a couple things you're going to need in addition to that. Not only does each party need the phone and the radio to be their um, transmitter and receiver, you need a Baofeng, um, in this case it's a BTEC Baofeng, Baofeng APRS V01 um, cable. And what this cable does is it connects to the microphone in and out of a cell phone and on the other side it connects to the microphone in and out on the radio. Now this was built for APRS also works with Morse code CW. Um, it works with actually many different things which I'm going to experiment with on this channel including slow scan television, uh, RTTY. Um, so we're going to have different, different um, videos uh, featuring these different things we can do on the Muir's um, channels. But you're going to need this and these cost about 
between ten and twenty dollars, depending on where you get them and when. eBay, Amazon, and uh, they're multi-use. Again, intended for APRS, but multi-use. They go to the radio's input/output, to your cell phone, specifically designed to do that. And that's basically the hub of this. So you have your app your dedicated radio and your cord to connect them and that's one side of your communications network and then you can duplicate that on the other side or just use your, your Zello um, channel to receive. The person on the receiving and, and transmitting end over here doesn't actually have to have a radio. Um, you can have the radio at one end. There's a few things you're going to have to do to set that up however. When you get your Zello account set up you need to go into options. Of course it never works the way you want it to. So we go into options. I just set up, set up this phone specifically for this. You're going to go into push to talk buttons and you need to select Vox button. Make sure that show button on the talk screen and keep Vox enabled when screen is locked, that's optional. But you need to have your show button on the talk screen so that when you're in your uh, Zello channel, and in this case the Muir's Radio Club MU1A1 channel, you can see down here this little Vox. Your radio needs to be set to Vox and you need to have the squelch low. So let's take a look at that. I go over here, I have Vox set to 1, which is what I want, and when I go to Squelch, I have that set to 3 because the radios are quite close to each other. And then um, that will allow you to trigger your Zello communicator. Again, to set this up, you have to have Vox enabled, and you might have to play around with volume. You don't want to overmodulate the volume coming in and out of the radio, and you also don't want to over overmodulate your volume in, in the phone. So you have to kind of set it up for the best voice quality. There's also a trainer in here um, when you're in your Vox that you can actually train the phone, uh, or Zello at least, to optimize on Vox. Um, when we go to push the talk buttons, we can optimize uh, the activation for human voice. And what this does, I have this at about three quarters up, what that does is it ensures that static that comes through or this irritating guy that's trying to break through on my on my test here on the Muir's Channel 5, um, this makes sure that it, it that Zello is waiting for a voice before it begins to record and transmit. It won't just pick up average static. So you can mess with that as well. So this is a really great opportunity for Muir's use because again as I always say you can do anything almost anything you can do on ham radio uh, which of course you need a license for you can do on Muir's um, which includes all of the data um, that you can do on ham radio you can't do that on CB you can't do that on GMRS you can do it on Muir's however legally without a license um, so this is the first video showing one of the great uses of Muir's um, you can't do this with you know, uh, store-bought GMRS bubble pack radios, you can't do it with FRS. Data is not allowed on there. You're not allowed to link those things to the, to the internet or to the phone service, but mirrors were allowed to do that. So uh, this is the first project. I hope that's helpful. If you have any questions, if I wasn't clear how to set that up, please let me know. And uh, I'll have that second video coming out. We're going to be doing slow scan television over mirrors. We're going to be doing Morse code over mirrors. And we're going to be doing RTTY, which is um, teletype. All right, seven three.